Just before we get into the conversation, I have to talk to you about the amazing Verdant products at Kin House. The moment you walk through those doors, their diffusers and candles fill the space with the most incredible scents, from fresh herbs and wild grasses to smoky greens and bright citrus infusions. The power of fragrance to evoke memories and emotions is at the heart of Verdon, and all their products are designed to reconnect you with happiness in every moment of self-care. And what's more, Verdon are now offering all you lovely listeners 20% off with the code CURATED20. So go on, light that candle, and let's get in to today's conversation. Hello and welcome to Curated Spaces, the podcast that explores the stories behind spaces reimagining how we stay, work and play. Join me, Molly Cooper, as I sit down with founders, owners and thought leaders to hear about their journey of bringing a space to life. Great spaces shape our lives. They inspire, nurture and connect us. But most importantly, they bring us together to share life's milestones with the people who mean the most to us. So whether you're a traveller, foodie or design seeker, join us as we celebrate the power of spaces and the brilliant people behind them. Today I'm out in Wiltshire in the pretty village of Kington Langley where you'll find the even more picture perfect Kin House, a private hire Georgian house with the dreamiest of interiors. With 12 stunning bedrooms, numerous marble bars and even a shell encrusted grotto, this is the ultimate space to gather your nearest and dearest to celebrate life's big milestones. And I'm incredibly excited to welcome Gabby Harvey, who undertook the mammoth task of breathing new life into this building and creating the beautiful space it is today. Gabby, welcome to Creative Spaces. So excited to have you here. How are you doing today? Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. What a lovely introduction. Um, it does help to give a nice one, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. And we're here in the study here in Kin House with these beautiful yellow walls, yeah. a crackling log fire. It's really quite a cosy little spot, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is a lovely room and beautiful gloss ceilings and oh. um, yeah, lovely space. Stunning. And I can't wait to get into it, but let's start with you and your backgrounds. I'd love to hear a bit about your story, which I know has had a few different chapters as well. Yeah, so um, my background is a little bit varied, but I've always come from a content background. I worked um, before Kin at Soho House for three years and then before that I was in Etaporte for five years. So both... Um, places I did content and marketing and but at Soho House I really that's where I really learned about hospitality and creating that customer journey that's really feels makes you really feel like at home and all those little details that make a space really warm and inviting and um, a bit different so I feel like those skills I learned there um, really lent itself to creating Kin because it's a very similar customer, I would say, yeah. to Soho House. And, you know, those our clients are very discerning in terms of what they like and their interiors taste. So I think um, we have quite a brand affinity um, to there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, no, you're so right. And there's definitely a touch of Soho House around this space, but we'll get into that. Let's start with where we are in the world. So we're here mm. in beautiful Wiltshire, one of my favourite counties, I have to say. Um, could you help like, paint a bit of a picture of the local area for people listening in? Yeah, so we're in the lovely village of Kington Langley, which mm -hmm. is about um, half an hour from Bath. So, um, yeah, we're surrounded by countryside yeah. and um, lots of beautiful historic buildings yeah it's just like a lovely little community mm -hmm. here and yeah we're just on the outskirts of the village and yeah very like best of British rolling hills <laughs> yeah. I mean I was driving here today and we've really lucked in on a beautiful crisp autumnal day and the leaves are just starting to go and these all these winding country lanes and the little sort of stone villages popping up every now and then it's a really really special pocket of the world isn't it, it really is and um the building is a really beautiful kind of centerpiece of the village Mm -hmm. It's really like the heart of um, village life. We've built some really great bonds with people in the village because yeah. obviously they're very protective over it because it used to be a care home before um, and it was really quite unloved when we found it at auction mm -hmm. actually. Um, 
and it's just been lovely to bring something back yeah. to the community and have something that's you know restored and mm. brought back to life basically yeah because it is is right in the heart of the village i almost missed the turnings i wasn't expecting <laughs> it to be just there and because so many of these big houses are sort of out at the end of a big long drive and quite detached from the local area whereas this is really like say in the heart of the village um, yeah. i'd love to hear about how you've brought it back into that community and everything going around that but let's start with like you say at the auction where you found it and what state it was in then yeah my husband is from a village just 20 minutes down the road um mm -hmm. called Cologne and um so he's always been from this area and yeah it came up for auction and I mean it was an absolute terrible state it was the yeah. walls the external walls were completely black with grime and inside obviously you can see beautiful ceiling in this room we're in here in the study and there's some lovely bones to this building beautiful fireplaces mm -hmm. and paneling um but it really was in a state of disrepair and you know it was absolutely when we started um taking it apart it was riddled with asbestos that was a an exciting thing to find <laughs> when you're renovating yeah. um and very expensive um but obviously that was yeah we bought it in 2019 and then covid happened and actually that was quite fortuitous for us mm -hmm. because it gave us the time and space to really get under the skin of the yeah. building look at all the original features and how mm. we're gonna um repurpose them and restore them um so when we were jet washing the exterior of the building the beautiful Cotswold stone was revealed underneath yeah. all the blackness so oh. that was amazing yeah. um, an amazing moment um, and then um, our little boot room where we've got a sort of changing room that was actually the doorway to this study so we moved that um, mm. and repurposed that in a different space um, yeah and then we could just we had that time to look at the whole building holistically and see mm. how it was going to work for big events and small um, yeah. because we get lots of different types of events here we mm. get big weddings um, and then we also get smaller sort of brand dinners mm. like influencer takeovers um, and private stays as well so yeah. we get a real range of um goings on here yeah and so nice to have that time and not be like struggling to hit a deadline and cutting corners but actually getting a feel for the building especially an old an old girl like this one you're yeah. getting to know them don't you yeah and did you have a very fixed idea or vision in your head of what you wanted it to look like in the end or was it very much a you were led by the building and it sort of evolved over time yeah i mean when we so lucy barlow and her husband josh did the interior design for us and um really it was making the choice to work with those guys that really led mm. the aesthetic for us because lucy's got such a distinctive playful yeah. um whimsical style um that we really wanted to give her um freedom to kind mm. of work her magic um so and for us we wanted to create something that was um more on the eccentric side of the british um yeah. country house um vibe so we wanted to add color and um yeah lots of like really fun quirky details which lucy is like amazing at mm -hmm. um so um yeah we we kind of let the the building lead us whereas you know there's lots of shell moti motifs everywhere mm. we have the shell canopy at the front yeah. um and that you know lots of shell details are seen all around the house like in the lighting and we've got a beautiful shell mm. grotto as well um so yeah we let the house definitely like lead us yeah. there but in terms of um color and things like that lucy was a real like driver mm -hmm. for that yeah, and you said playful and you can really see it. It's a very like fresh, fun feeling in what is a very old building, these like big ornate ceilings all painted this beautiful sort of baby pastel blue. Mm. You're looking around, I can see the fringing and blue mm. velvet and then these sort of blue leather seats you've got yeah. around the place and then you go through a little sort of corridor and then suddenly there's this huge tortoise shell bar and it's just like every room's got a little surprise just waiting to come out it's really yeah fun. exactly and that's definitely like lucy all over um and we really yeah trusted her i mean we'd had lovely i really remember fondly like our times when we were in their um studio space in west london looking at through thousands of swatches of fabrics and um you know just 
patching everything together and creating yeah. mood boards it was such a fun process i loved that part yeah. um but i mean it's definitely lucy's vision mm -hmm. um i can't take any credit for her amazing work here but i loved being part of that process yeah and i think you really get that in the bedrooms as well it says 12 here yeah but all, and they are all you know you can see them in the same building but they're all incredibly different they all have really beautiful beds and gorgeous rugs some of them have got those amazing freestanding baths um and that one with the paisley print on the side of the bath just so much yeah so much thought has gone into every element it feels like yeah exactly exactly it definitely has and um yeah i think the bedrooms are you know some of my, my favorite parts of the house because mm -hmm. i love how they're all entirely unique like yeah. each one has its own array of antiques um beautifully designed bespoke rugs by pelican house all different mm -hmm. art the arts all you know completely yeah. curated for that space so yeah um they've got a real individual feel which makes it feel like a private home i think mm, yeah you really get that feeling as you walk around this isn't like a sort of oh you know a wedding venue it's uh it feels more like a home or like you say like a, a mini hotel you've got all to yourself which is just the dream yeah. and as soon as you walk in you can smell those gorgeous verdant products and it's just like mm, I've arrived <laughs> yeah yeah exactly we definitely want to convey that feeling of it not feeling mass produced or mm. um you know or like a an event venue without yeah. any soul like we really wanted it to feel like when you arrive you're immediately at home um and yeah you've got a lovely crackling log fire um a beautifully like barista made coffee like we wanted it to feel like that environment like you are being looked after as mm. though you're in a hotel and there's all those lovely little details that yeah. make it feel really luxurious yeah and but of course it's got a little bit more than your average hotel as well and i'm thinking of the the very barbie-esque beauty salon and then the barbers up in in the eaves and that those amazing like dark green walls and the little spot to have your hair done and maybe gather with your ushers or you know you hang out with your friends have your makeup done I think they're just like such special places that you can really see why people would love them and it would set it apart from your bog standard hotel or wherever. Yeah, exactly. And um, yeah, those are, you know, I think those are the sort of rooms that people are really drawn to when they mm -hmm. come here, particularly brands who want to, yeah. you know, we get lots of lovely beauty brands here doing, um, showcasing new products and mm -hmm. things like that. And um, I think the spaces um, really lend themselves to being, you know, used really creatively, um, which is also what we want to do. We want to really inspire people with mm -hmm. the spaces and be being within like the beautiful interiors yeah well I think it'd be very hard not to feel inspired here but let's talk about the kind of people that do come and use the space obviously you've got the weddings which is a big part but I know you do a lot more of like smaller brand events and stuff within the local community as well so I'd love to hear a bit about that side of things yeah so um we have our separate wing of the house which is where our sort of larger event spaces which mm. we have a capacity for 200 so that's sort of where our mostly our weddings take place yeah. um but if you're not having a big um shindig like that we can sort of curtain it off mm. and it feels quite separate it's quite a nice way of um that actually used to be an old 60s extension block mm. which is actually what really drew my husband to matt who's the co-founder who um to buy this property because it has the bones of it which are the georgian mm. um facade here that we're in right now um but the separate wing that it um was the 60s block with that was transformed into the big um hall dining mm, hall that, um yeah. so it feels quite separate so if you're a smaller event you've got obviously this lovely room here where we're in the study the hearth room which is like the heart of the house where we have private mm. dinners um workshops and um your breakfast in the morning yeah. and the drawing room and fitz bar which are lovely kind of reception mm. spaces like cozy bar yeah um space for the evening and then we can put on lots of different activities for you while you're here so we do mm. yoga and foraging beautiful woodland dinners oh, um funny. and um all sorts of different creative workshops that we yeah. can put on while you're here so we've got the we've got the space to do it so um mm. and we get lots of brands who come to us with really fun interesting ideas that they yeah. want to do themselves so oh. um we're always open to 
new ideas as well uh, and yeah you, you've got some really gorgeous outdoor space as well don't you there's sort of quite formal lawns going down and then there's a the secret sort of walled garden as well yes exactly so the walled garden was our sort of second phase of works because the, the properties were actually originally linked mm. but when we bought kin house they were separate so yeah. we acquired that part of the site um, a little bit later down the line okay. um, and it was always part of our vision to kind of bring it back mm-hmm. together um so it was amazing when we had the opportunity to do that yeah. um and yeah so we've got our lovely wall garden and then our garden house which is um a really beautiful space where um we've got a lovely shell um not shell pot wall create created by mel campion who did our shell grotto Ooh. um and um it's for workshops and again rehearsal dinners um lunches um yeah so that's a lovely multifunctional space mm-hmm. in a different part of the site um yeah yeah. So you can really come here on the Friday, take over, make a full weekend of it, enjoy all the different spaces. I think that's so so lovely yeah, to exactly. have that and in such a fun, fresh format that's just not stuffy at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then talking about like food and drinks. So do you work with like local suppliers or what kind of eating and drinking do people do here? Yeah, so we work with um our partners, Jen and James, who um do all the food there are f&b directors and they do all our food concepts here so um they're like an amazing team to work with um jen's super creative um and really talented with all the styling and james is like the executive chef and business Mm -hmm. owner so he is from a chef background and then he runs the team now so um they're incredible partners and we have do lots of different types of dining options here Mm -hmm. so we have our lovely wood oven outside where we do pizzas and like slow cooked um, meat and all sorts Mm. of things there where we can have like dinners by the wall garden and in the garden house and Mm. lots of um, guests who clients who've come here have done lovely alfresco lunches Mm. Um, and then we have our woodland um, we have lovely secret bit of woodland where there's a lovely path leading down it and you can do um parties and um food and drink down there um which is really nice and then um yeah i mean we do all sorts of things from our big wedding um breakfasts Mm. and then we have a really lovely breakfast menu it's probably one of my favorite parts is the yeah. breakfast we do this incredible marmite butter crumpet which is oh my gosh, to die yum. for i love a crumpet perfect um the morning after a big party mm-hmm. <laughs> clear that head yeah. yeah um and yeah so there's so much opportunity for different yeah. types of dining here we do picnics Ooh. and all sorts it feels very seasonal as you were speaking there now because obviously it's autumn is here winter's coming and i can so imagine sitting down and enjoying like a big best british sort of evening meal next to the fire but also i can so picture heading down for a picnic on the lawn or going to eat in the woods it feels like one of those spaces that will be very different with each season but just as lovely with whatever time of the year you're here yeah exactly i think it's got um you know real potential for all different mm. types of events yeah. and seasons and yeah we love to be really creative and we don't like to set too much to prescribe to too much of a um set formula we like to really change it up Mm -hmm. and introduce new things and be really experimental with what we do so i guess you're still actually quite early on in your journey because what you bought in 2019 was it yes exactly so we only launched last year we had our first event with um shrimps which was our launch party in Mm. july um last year so we've kind of done just over our first year of um, oh my gosh. yeah events this year so it's been really exciting yeah how have you found that yeah I mean it's definitely been like learning process it's mm-hmm. always a bit chaotic when you're launching a business but mm. I think um the sort of beauty of doing private events is that you have lots of planning time particularly for weddings which is our sort of bread and butter Mm -hmm. um weekend um business um where we have yeah so you can plan really far in advance Mm. um and um yeah it's been like a bit of a roller coaster Mm -hmm. um but really exciting and we keep pushing like to be that 
private hire hotel um, feeling, that's yeah. really what we want to push towards. So we want to look at how we can maybe introduce room service mm. and um, all those little touches that yeah. make it feel yeah. like extra special to stay yeah. here. For when the, the head is too sore to get downstairs for your yes, <laughs> marmite exactly. butter crump, it comes yeah. to you. Yeah. <laughs> and have there been any standout events that you just thought, wow, I never thought we'd be doing this or this just right here, right now, this moment is just like magical? Oh my gosh, that's a question. Um, I mean, we did a really lovely event recently with beauty pie in collaboration with them Mm -hmm. when we launched our garden house um Mm. we did um we had a whole host of um gorgeous influencers who came and stayed and um we did a beautiful workshop with harley briggs the ceramicist in the garden house um and um transformed it afterwards into this gorgeous um dinner setting Mm. with loads of fruit and flowers and um grazing boards on the table um and that was really gorgeous um and uh we did yoga on the lawns in the wall garden out there um and it was just lovely to see the space come to life Mm. and it was just a lovely bunch of people and beauty pie were fab to work with um so that's probably one of my favorite events yeah it sounds like if the barbie movie was real (laughs) oh and then looking ahead then because i mean a year in i'm sure it's been a steep learning curve do you have things you want to do things you're aiming for or you still just like let's enjoy this ride and see where it goes um well i mean as i mentioned before it's it's great to have our calendars quite booked up in advance Mm, particularly on the wedding side of things um so it's it's amazing for planning um But I think we just want to really learn from our first year, really like um, add those extra special touches um, and looking to do a turn down service again, for example, Mm -hmm. and all those things that, um, yeah, make it feel really luxurious. And we've obviously got um, a few little things up our sleeve to Mm -hmm. make the experience a bit more um, varied and exciting as we're... um, Got, we've gone in for planning permission for a swimming pool. Okay. So, um, well, we actually have planning permission already. We're just looking to relocate it. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're talk- in talks with Lucy again about, because we couldn't work with anyone else, obviously. But Lucy, yeah. she was just going to create something amazing, oh, wow. something really bright and colourful and wonderful. Mm. Um, so watch this space that's very exciting and having (laughs) seen all the tiling in the bathroom i'm sure she will not disappoint yes (laughs) yeah and then a little birdie told me there might be something else maybe a little sister yes yeah we are um we are launching our next project Mm -hmm. which is in coming soon in january um which is in sussex um so so yes that's all under construction at the moment so Yeah, very exciting. The, the family is growing. Yes, the family is definitely growing. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, well, it's been such a pleasure having you here today, Gabby. Before Thanks for we do me. go, I do have a game of Dream Spaces to play with you. Mm-hmm. Imagine you cash that winning lottery check. So money is of no object. I'm going to ask you three questions and you just let me know what space comes to mind for you. Okay. So number one is, where are you running away to, to disconnect, to detox, get away from it all? Oh my gosh. Um, Oh, that's a really good question. Um, We stayed in a beautiful um, little place in Scotland, Mm. um, which is um, in the Cairngorms and it's called Glenfeshie Lodge. And it's in the most beautiful beautiful countryside in the highlands and it's actually very similar to kin where it's a private hire Mm. house um and it's just your quintessential scottish hunting lodge like tartan everywhere velvet Mm. beautiful like mahogany wood um barbers hanging on every rack and welly boots like around and it's just super luxurious but Mm. right in the middle of nature and they're doing an incredible 
job of rewilding that area of Scotland in the Cairngorms and it's so it feels so remote but it's only an hour or so from Mm. um, Inverness so um, yeah that is definitely somewhere where I escape to and they just look after you so well there I mean the the food is just unbelievable Mm. beautiful porridge every morning and anything that you could possibly want that literally sounds yeah. perfect. I love Scotland. <laughs> Have to get up there. Yeah. Quite, a tr- quite a trip from here. But... Yeah, <laughs> yes, definitely a trip from here. <laughs> okay, next one is slightly different. Kin house aside, your ultimate birthday party, where are you hosting it? Um, well, we recently just got back from Stockholm and we stayed in this mm. beautiful hotel designed by Ilsa Crawford called Et Hem. And um, it was just absolutely like the interiors are just amazing yeah and it's sort of a collection of little townhouses and so your all your friends could be spread across it and you could take it over because um, it's really cozy and intimate um and they just have the most ilsa has just done such a good job there yeah. the interior is just so beautiful and the art is amazing and the food the yeah. breakfasts were just insane they bake all their bread in house in the morning and these oh amazing God. swedish pastries mm. um and you could take over the restaurant and have an incredible candlelit dinner in there that would be a very dreamy oh birthday oh my gosh i love the scandies so that sounds perfect <laughs> excellent answer and no one said sweden yet i don't think no so. well we'd never been before it was an amazing mm. city yeah okay. there's like a thunderstorm is about to hit us here but we're hunkered down in the study <laughs> so we'll carry on your once in a lifetime bucket list trip where are you going and you staying anywhere special um, this one is quite an easy one for me because my husband Matt and I on our honeymoon went to Brazil mm-hmm. and we stayed in this incredible hotel called Ushua Ooh. in Trancoso, which is um, in Bahia mm. and it's just gorgeous. It's on right in front of the ocean. Oh. It's like nomadic luxury at its best. It has this incredible kidney bean shaped pool with um Mm. green amazing green tiling i think it's something like beautiful jade stones or something and it's amazing and they have all these little cabanas Mm. and it's super brazilian it's where kind of all the um people from rio go on their holidays so it's really not european at all so it feels like a real adventure going there um and it's just the most lovely little beach town, I guess. Yeah. And it's just, yeah, really special place. Oh my gosh, amazing. Sounds like some serious pool inspo right there. <laughs> Lucy, get on it. <laughs> and excellent answers, very well played. And thank you so okay. much for coming on the podcast. Oh, thanks for having me, Molly. I've been loved it. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad that we wrapped up just in time for the storm to hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the Curated Spaces podcast. For more information and content around any of the spaces we feature, head to our website or Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe to have new episodes delivered straight to your inbox every Wednesday. And if there's a special place in your life that you'd like to hear on the Curated Spaces podcast, please do get in touch as we're always on the lookout for more brilliant spaces to share with the world.